Hello everyone and welcome to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And what's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire existence to watching every single piece of Shonen Jump anime that is translated in some way. Uh, throughout the history of Shonen Jump, constantly stuff being added as we saw that there actually is... The with the most recent Shonen Jump news coming out that the, there's a Kaniku, new Kaniku Man anime coming out, and then there is actually a new <laughs> Gintama anime also coming we're out. Adding more Gintama as we're slowly moving through it. As we're moving forward, now the here's finish the finish line gets further and further away. <laughs> Just non-stop adding it, and of course Jujutsu Kaisen is also coming out this year, so it's non-stop addition to it, and we plan to do this until the end of time itself, or until the end of our known existence. And today is our 50th episode! Whoa, Zen, we did it! 50 episodes! <laughs> Would you imagine? Oh yeah, that is our 50th episode, how about that? Yeah, our 50th, as we've gone, it's been a... Uh... It's been a hell of a ride as we've gone through so many uh, anime so far. Even with you know, we even though our first episode was Gintama and our fiftieth is still Gintama. <laughs> we've talked about a whole bunch of other ones like Chainsaw Man and Yu Gi Oh GX and uh, Dragon Ball Superhero Superhero. No, Dragon Ball Super Superhero. God, it's such a dumb name for a movie. Um, <laughs> and a bunch of other ones as well. It's crazy to think that we are able to keep on doing it. This has now officially outlasted the thing that we joked about doing it inside, which is uh, Jampudi Jams. <laughs> oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah, crazy to think about. <laughs> Our legacy of just like making a joke in one a podcast and then just moving on to that one <laughs> and just continuing on forward in a never-ending osmosis. <laughs> is astounding to be to be sure but yeah thank you very much everyone for being here for our 50th episode and we're gonna spend it talking about of course gintama episodes 119 to one it's a really weird number 123 <laughs> our numbering got really weird and yeah this is one hell of a i'm glad that this specific weird mini arc is our 50th zen <laughs> Yeah, I think there's yeah, nothing. That is unfortunate, isn't it? The <laughs> screwdriver dick arc is our fiftieth episode. It totally is. The world's longest dick joke is our fiftieth episode. But before we get to the dick stuff, let's go into episode one nineteen. Within each box of cigarettes are one or two cigarettes that smell like horse dung. As someone who has never smoked cigarettes, I don't know if that's true. I'm assuming it is. Don't they all kind of like smell like shit, though? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm glad we can agree on this. <laughs> Go ahead and tell us what happens in episode 119, son. Episode 119, they institute a smoking ban, not just in the, uh, like, indoors, but all over the whole city. Hmm. So Hijikata can't find anywhere to... Uh, smoke and he goes to the, the best part of the smoking van is when he goes to this uh little smoking corner and he's like finally i can smoke and he puts his ashes into it and it's a bomb <laughs> just designed to kill anyone that's still smoking uh so he decides he's gonna leave the planet and he's gonna go smoke off the planet um and he ends up going to planet... What is it? It's a Namek knockoff. It's like... Uh, hammock. Planet Hammock. And uh, it's it's been destroyed by Breeza. And so there's no cigarettes there, even though it used to be like the cigarette planet. <laughs> Just a, a safe haven for all cigarette smoking. <laughs> yeah. And so um, the Elder's like, yeah, there's, no, there's only this one cigarette left. Uh, this is the only one left in the whole planet, and he goes to give it to Hijikata, and uh, this little kid comes out who's supposed to be like a Dende knockoff. Derude and, um, or something like that. He's like, don't don't give that to him, it's my, it's the cigarette that my, the last one my father made before he got killed by Breeza. Uh, and so they fight uh, a little bit, and he's like, you know, cigarettes are for smoking, your father would want it to be smoked. And so the kid eventually offers the cigarette to Hijikata, but Hijikata refuses, and he goes to fight Breeza, uh, defeats him, 
and he gets a Dragon Ball knockoff called like the the Ooey Gooey Ball. Yes. Yeah, and he says that if you get all of the Ooey Gooey Balls, you'll get a wish. Um, and then a Goku knockoff is crying over the dead body of his friend Grillin. <laughs> Grillin it. And he says that he wants to get all seven of the Ooey Gooey Balls so that he can bring him back to life. And so Hijikata decides that he's going to do that, too, for reasons <laughs> I don't know. He's, um, at this point, he's just fed up because when he's into the plane, there's like a guy who constantly is asked, so how did the smoking go? He's like, I'm collecting the balls to revive Grillin. He's like, "You're how did you get here? Yeah. <laughs> You've gone so far away from what you wanted. <laughs> so... so. Uh, he ends up fighting a Cell knockoff next, which I think is just named, like, Cello, Ch- uh, Cello or something. Yeah, Ke- <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he ends up throwing up what looks... It's like the same scene as when Cell throws up 18, but uh, it throws... Uh, he throws up... Um, the ooey gooey balls. The, the ooey gooey balls, yeah, the rest of them. Um, and they summon the dragon, and the Goku knockoff ends up doing the Oolong Wish for panties and then Hijikata revives uh the little Namekian boy's dad and he's like you don't need the um you don't need this the memento of your father anymore because your father is back but then the the father's like some gross <laughs> slimy gooey monster yeah and they're like oh my god you desecrated the dead <laughs> and then Hijikata's like I'm not gonna smoke anymore please <laughs> stop smoking and it, and he, the best part of it, too, is because he keeps, he's on this ship. Every time he's going somewhere new on this stupid Dragon Ball adventure, he, uh, he's on a, like, a, one of those, uh, sh- spaceships that mm-hmm. are literal boats. Um, and there's always the same person right next to him. He's like, so, did you get that cigarette yet? <laughs> and each time he gets, like, a progressively more unhinged answer. It's really good. It's yeah, really he, funny. It is. Uh, this one, uh, let me give my some notes here. Uh, I really like the beginning here with Matsudaira where he says, let's put aside the big problems of ozone and depletion and global warming. Cause it reminded me that not much has changed <laughs> since this episode first released in 2008. <laughs> it was real, it was a real, like a splash of water to the face. It's like, damn, this episode really did not age in any <laughs> considerable way at all. Um, as a big Dragon Ball fan, obviously this dumb, stupid Dragon Ball adventure that he goes on is really funny because they do like the eye catches from Dragon Ball, and I think Hijikata also like starts complaining about like because at some point Master Roshi starts narrating, or someone in the guise of Master Roshi from Dragon Ball says like Hijikata's quest to smoke a single cigarette. And he's like, "Why are you showing me all the things I've already seen? <laughs> like I just literally did all that." <laughs> You don't need to go redoing oh, the ball. Yeah. He's like, why am I seeing a flashback of the previous episode? I don't need that. <laughs> I don't need that right now. <clears throat> Breeza, I really like how easily he seems to just beat Breeza, and it seems like Breeza's like, oh, obviously you were beating me for this, right? This is what you wanted. He's like, no, I just wanted to kill you so I can smoke something. I don't care about any of this. And then the guy that he's with... Um, after where the guy, his name is like Kobayashi, but the when he's like mourning the death of Grillin, it's a Goku and uh, Krillin parody. But then when he's with him, he's very clearly supposed to be like Yamcha. Um, so he's doing double duty on that one. I like it when they collect the set. <laughs> There's a part where it's like, you must be the legendary Super Earthling. And then they show <laughs> their Bardock parody and it looks nothing like fucking Bardock at all. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like an old guy. He's just an old guy. That doesn't even look like me. No, he's like, what? This doesn't look anything like me. He's he's like, he's balding. He's got the scouter. He's doing a Kamehameha. He goes like, oh, you must be him, the legendary super earthling. He's like, no, I'm nothing related to this at all. Leave me alone. Um... Uh, when he beats up Perfect Cell, uh, not the Perfect Cell, but the Perfect Cello... And he throws them all up. It's also really funny because that's when we learned that the ooey gooey balls are actually, they're not the ooey gooey balls. They're actually the slippery balls. Well, they call them something else too. I think they call them also the sticky icky balls and the st- they're also not that. Yeah. And so he's like, whatever, they're the same thing, right? And then he's like, no, I, I really wanted the ooey gooey balls. He's like, it's the same damn ball. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> 
Uh, and then when they summon the dragon, it's just like a super. It's such a gross version of the of the dragon from Dragon yeah, Ball. Shenron, and he's like all nasty. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I'll ask you, please. And then the reason he tells him to hurry up because he's like, I'm please, I'm hardening. And then you can actually see the dragon hardening because of he's drying out in the in real time. <laughs> um, and yeah, the the him constantly going back into the ship and like explaining to this guy, he's like, so did you get that cigarette? And he's like getting progressively more crazy. Like the manic energy of Hijikata in this one, a man who just simply wants to smoke a single cigarette, is very. Uh, telling, because we've all been there, when you just want this one thing, and it seems like the entire world is trying to stop you <laughs> from doing the one thing that you want, and he's going yeah, for- it's funny too, because earlier on in the episode, he's like, when I'm told not to smoke, it just makes me want to do it more. Yeah. Exactly. And obviously that wish and them bringing back his father was really funny, uh, especially because he revives all sticky and it really <laughs> flies in the... It really feels like they might have a nice moment and then it's immediately... Because the the way his dad also looks like, he also kind of looks a little bit like um, Demon King Piccolo if he was just like super slimy all the time. <laughs> it's, it looks really funny. And yeah, and then the end of it here, just to make sure that Majin Buu wasn't out there, we get a version of Prince Hada as uh, Majin Buu, as they do a next time on Ui Gui Ball, episode 120, <laughs> and they you see them briefly as, they're like fighting in the world tournament, and Hijikata's dressed up as Goku. <laughs> yeah, it's Goku and Buu. Yeah. yeah, really good. So I really liked it. I thought it was a very a silly, dumb premise but they really like how how they took the turn from like this is an episode about the banning of smoking and turning it into actually it's about dragon ball it's kind of a work of art in of, its, in of, of itself because i did not see that coming at all so i enjoyed it how'd you feel about it zen it was good it was really good i liked a lot of the jokes um kijikata is always funny like he's mm -hmm. despite being like the serious tough guy character he's really funny when shit just goes stupid <laughs> um all the dragon ball references were really funny uh all, all of it was good i mm -hmm. mean it's funny that like the whole episode the smoking plot is basically abandoned very quickly and it's just like here's just a bunch of dragon ball jokes <laughs> over and over <laughs> in a row and as a big fan of dragon ball i was all here for it i'm like hell yeah give me your <laughs> give me your whatever i i tell you right now that bardock joke as someone especially who does is not the biggest fan of bardock fucking killed me because everyone else looks kind of like the characters that they're based off of but the bardock one does not look anything like bardock at all <laughs> really good <laughs> <clears throat> now let's move on to episode 120 which is i believe a two-parter yes it's a part a and a part b and the first part is called japanese restaurants abroad taste pretty much like school cafeteria lunches go ahead son and then i'll look so, at the part uh, b when we get there asagawa is uh running like a little sushi. no 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 that's part b is that part B? Yeah, that's part B. Part A is the the Katsuro stuff. Oh, it's the Katsuro part? Okay, yeah, yeah. but I got them flip-flopped. So the Katsuro part, uh, there's this seafood restaurant um, run by Amanto. And there's going to be a, a revolt by the revolutionaries because they don't let uh, humans in there. So mm -hmm. Katsuro is going to infiltrate it and uh, try to like ruin it like ruin the business by just being awful yeah uh, and his disguise is just a fucking like fish like claw <laughs> fish head that his regular face sticks out of and his name is joey katsura <laughs> joey katsura yeah <laughs> and then they're like oh hey man and he's like no 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 just call me katsura <laughs> <laughs> um and then prince hada is also working there um because he got kicked out and so he's like uh, Katsura's like senior employee that's helping train him. Yeah, his senpai. Um, yeah, and so they're both working, uh, and they like uh, he's like doing awful shit. Like he sprays one customer in the eyes, and he's like cleaning his eyes. 
Yeah. He's like, I would have told you to clean the windows. He's like, no, the eyes are the window to the soul. <laughs> and then uh, Prince Hada's like, Just, you didn't learn anything I taught you, did you? And he starts wiping the customer's dick. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what does he say? The, the they zipper say is the, the window to the world? <laughs> they say the zipper is the window to the world. I have no idea how they fuck they got away with jacking a man <laughs> off on a shonen jump anime. I was like so fucking taken. I was like, yo, there's no way they have Prince on and just wiping a man's crotch. And it's very clear this man is enjoying this wipe down. Yeah, he's like red in the face and everything. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, it was like, what the fuck? And then it's like... <laughs> Also, the super serious face he gives when he says, they say the zipper is the window to the world. And his fucking, like, Marlon Brando voice fucking killed me. It's very good. But yeah, he jacks him off, and then what happens then? <laughs> and then, uh, so the revolutionaries show up that wanted to destroy it, and, uh, they go to attack, and Katsura catches the sword, and he's like, no, no violence, only love and peace. And he says love and peace in English. Yeah, the way Prince Hada does. <laughs> yeah. And, um, uh, then Prince Hada's attendant guy busts out, drunk, and he's like, aha, I got Prince Hada thrown out, and I'm actually in a good mood now, it's great, but then Prince Hada's, like, right there. Um, and so he starts beating him up, and then Katsura's like, you know what, if you guys are gonna be like this, then fine. <laughs> and he walks out and slams the door, and just leaves, and that's the end. He's such, he's such, he throws such a tantrum over this. Yeah, and they, they call him mother, I think, when he, when he throws the tantrum and leaves. He does. Oh, so fucking funny. And the way, like, his voice sounds exactly like he's throwing, like, a hissy fit. It does. He seems, like, so fed up with it. He just walks out the door. He slams the door shut. And that's it. And that's the end of part A. <laughs> okay. Uh, I really like this part. I don't know why the combination... I, I, first of all, obviously, big fan of Katsura. And also, somehow, 120 episodes. I ain't afraid to say, big fan of Prince Hada. Absolutely love him every single time he's in now. It took that one episode where they just kept, like... They did this specific Prince Hada opening, and he just kept saying, peace and love. But I'm now fully on board to say I love this man. And every time he shows up, I think it's fucking hilarious. So actually putting them together and then having Katsura be like his, uh, his under, not his underling, but like the, the, the have a senpai like relationship with him is really funny because the second Katsura is like underneath someone like in a senpai way, he immediately turns into the most respectful man possible. Like he does this with Kagura all the time. Where he starts respecting characters that really do not deserve that level of respect. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he does it here with Prince Hada. Mm. And it's really funny because he gives him like this whole breakdown about like how I think that the world would just be better off if there everyone just had more peace and love. And then he really takes that to heart because that's kind of what he's trying to do here. I also even like the little differences in his character here where he's like, well, I... I don't like what they're doing here, but also I don't want them all to be dead because I don't think that actually benefits the overall things that are going to happen. So I want to stop this in a peaceful way. And just to have all of that, just like all this learning he's learned of peace and love be thrown out the window the second Prince Hada sees his like attendant who abandoned him and he immediately starts beating the shit out of him. Who also has a really funny like Amanto with him who is like a very shitty it's version. Just a giant <laughs> Prince Hada head, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's really good. Also, his disguise here is just so... Uh, it goes back to what you're saying about how the Shinsengumi can never really find him, even though he is the world's shittiest person at disguising himself. And here, he not only calls himself Joey Katsura, but his name is also a parody of Joy, which means anti-foreigner faction. <laughs> 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 so, a great part A. This is my. This might be one of the greatest part A's that we've seen <laughs> in the yeah, history of two parters. Really good. Usually the two parters are kind of at, like hit or miss, just kind of. Eh. Yeah, this was, this yeah. Was it, it's all because of Katsura, frankly. Mm -hmm. It's always Katsura that saves the day. It does. He's just really man, just fucking a great ass character here. And of course, though the wiping just really funny. <laughs> There's something about just unabashedly wiping a man in the crotch and being like, oh yeah, this is just a joke here. The, the best part is because he does it right after scolding Katsura. Like, no, <laughs> you do it like this. Don't do it like that. And he immediately does an even worse version of it. Amazing. Lovely. 
great stuff. What we come to expect from Gintama. <laughs> Anything else you have to say about it, Zen? Uh, no. This is good. Then let's go on to part B. Once you've taken a dish, you can't put it back. So this is the one where, um... <clears throat> Hasegawa has, like, a sushi restaurant. And he's the manager of it, and he invites people to come over, uh... To, to eat at the restaurant, and then he reveals that he can't uh, make anything other than cucumber rolls. It's all he knows how to make. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the sushi, the sushi machine is broken because he had like a machine to do it for him, and then it, it broke, and he can't do it himself for some reason. Uh, even though I'm pretty sure like a cucumber sushi roll is just the same thing as a regular one, but just with cucumber instead of fish. Yeah, they they show it eventually, but they because when he tries to teach him how to do it, he shows like, oh yeah, I take the rice, I put this, and then you put it on that, and then somehow it turned into a cucumber roll, and then they start being yeah, up it, because like, cuts to black, and in the next scene is it's a cucumber roll, and then then Kentucky's like, what happened? Something <laughs> happened when we changed things. We literally saw you put the fish on top of it. How did it turn into a cucumber roll? Are you a vegetarian? <laughs> <laughs> um and then everyone else tries making it um uh otai tries making one and she puts it all together and when she goes to squish it and she opens her hand it's the same burnt food <laughs> that she always makes anytime she makes any food it's like burnt to a crisp yeah and she blames it on having a fever um <laughs> and then gintoki goes to do it and his is like a chocolate sundae yeah it is a chocolate sundae Immediately. It's a giant chocolate sundae. Um, Kagura does it right, but it's like fucking huge. <laughs> it's like a giant thing with a huge slab of tuna on it. And then she also um, plans to eat it. <laughs> yeah. And then the robot maid is there. Um, and she can actually make it. Uh, but she makes it by like eating all of the material and then vomiting it back out. <laughs> And so no one wants to serve it because it's really nasty. But um, Gintoki finally does just give it to the people who ordered it, and they end up loving it. They think it's, like, really good. <laughs> so it gets really popular. Uh, and a bunch of people come up, including Hijikata and Kondo, but, like, they, they can't do anything other than cucumber rolls that keep coming out. Uh, Hijikata orders the uh, flat, what was it, flat something fish filet. Yeah. Um, and what comes out instead is it's it's flat curry. And he's like, no, that can't be right, because I ordered the, the flat filet. And then it comes back around, and they change the piece of paper on it to say flat filet curry. <laughs> uh, because they're just trying to give anyone food. Um, yeah, because they ran out of the ingredients because of how popular Tom would end up being. <laughs> so they, they're back to making just the, whatever they fucking can. This bit uh, is yeah, also- and then... Uh, they all end up quitting, and then there's a, a freeze frame at the end of a Hasegawa like fighting a narwhal with Trident. Yeah, as he's because he's trying to get the ingredients, but he's not going to a store. He's actually going out and fishing. Yeah, he's like trying to get the fish. He's like, everyone, please wait for me. <laughs> uh okay. This episode. This part B. I also really like this part B. When Tama is going for the vomit scene, and she's like going, huh? and she's doing it, and she puts it, and she goes, done, and then Nosago then goes, that's gross, what are you, Demon King Piccolo? Yeah, he calls her Demon King Piccolo, <laughs> because she vomits the sushi out like the egg. She does, and he's just like, and it, <laughs> it was really funny, he goes like, Piccolo Demo, it's like, what are you? That's great. The bit about like Hasegawa only being able to make the 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 one specific roll, the cucumber roll, over and over again was also really funny. Uh, there's a part where Tama is like, maybe Tama can fix the machine, and she does like this whole thing where she goes inside the mind of the the machine to see what's up with it, and they have like this uh, this like romantic scene together, which makes it look like it's a a dra- like a TV drama where they're like two co-workers talking about something from a female drama and then she ends up fucking destroying it and she goes like there was no saving the machine <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great the bit obviously where they're all trying to make the different sushi was great especially the burnt the funniest thing is that they try and sell like the- this is when Hijikata and um um Hijikata and what 
condo condo are together and they're trying to be like who would buy any of this stuff and the thing that's on, like on the plane is like uh tay's fucking burt <laughs> and it's like we sell for like i think it was five thousand yen or so he's like who would buy that that just seems <laughs> uh it was 300 yen and they called it dark matter that's right dark matter <laughs> 300 yen, they called it dark matter it's like i don't know who would buy that oh so what's a parfait doing here it has to go into the fridge where it's going to just melt yeah it's a melted parfait on the belt it's like all gross looking mm-hmm. and this this bit here on the fucking tra- it was so funny because it's such a slow burn to get to the eventual part where they're just like no i think that's your curry you got to pick it up it's like no that's not me i'm just gonna keep waiting for my food um and then finally they take the the final name of the curry is called take the curry idiot <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> and the the thing that I forget what condo orders, but the thing that comes out is someone a guy named I think he um he ordered Ika, but the thing that comes out is a guy called Ikazo, and he's just like a dude. <laughs> he's just like a dude on a rotating plate, and then finally he's like, "I think that's your order, condo." It's like, "No, no, no, I ordered Ika. <laughs> that's someone completely different." And then the third time when he. <laughs> <laughs> the third time when he comes around, he has two plates of curry, and he just starts running towards them. Yeah, <laughs> he's just, like, rushing at them. <laughs> so funny. And then they just go, all right, that's it, everyone. <laughs> this episode's over. We're quitting. And I was like, I was, like, back on the showing him in the ocean. I forget if... I think this 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 shot is in the next episode, or I think I forget if this shot is a, from a previous episode. But it's like a super no, it is yeah no no they reference this in the Monster Hunter parody. Um, this shot of Hasegawa like going to go fight someone in a super dramatic fashion <laughs> is really good. And yeah, this was damn. This is a really good two parter one. Both of them were just really funny to me. Mm-hmm. Usually, yeah, the two parters both hitting like this is not common. No, um, but both were really good. Dad, this was a fucking great episode. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It really did. It made it nice because we had been we had taken such a long not break, but it had been a while since we'd seen Gintama. So these two coming back to him, pretty fitting. Pretty good returns to him. <laughs> But yeah, let's move on to... Do you have anything else to say? Uh, no. Very good. Very funny. Yes. Oh, and I can't remember if this is the beginning of the next one. Do you know the the one is like, what is Gintama? Is that at the beginning of the next episode or at the end of the previous episode? Uh, you know, I think it's at the end of, of the one that we just did. Okay, the, okay. the teacher Gin segment? Yes, where he says, what is Gintama trying to do? And his answer is, I don't know either. I really wish people would stop asking me this. I should have... Maybe I should have said something like, I'm going to become the Samurai King. Like, he's basically insulting. Like, yeah, if I thought- he's like on the, the Thousand Sunny, and he's like, I should have just said I'd become King of the Samurai. Yeah, he's like... people would get it. <laughs> he's like, if I knew that people were going to be this annoying with his damn question, I would have never... <laughs> thought of i would have come up with something like that and then it ends with like the, and the goal of gintama the anime is to become the samurai king and he's dressed up as luffy and he just goes off i thought it was really funny of them just like him just like dressing down the audience he's like why the hell do you care so much <laughs> why <laughs> what the point is reminds Fuck. me of my uh i want to be the guy <laughs> complaints <laughs> yes oh yeah that's right yeah it's exactly that it's really funny um, so yes, now we can move on to the next episode, which is episode 121. Novices only need a flat head and a Phillips, which is a screwdriver. And this is uh, the start of uh, the next arc, which is the Monster Hunter arc, I think is what it's called. The Mon Hun arc, because the, it's not called Monster Hunter, it's called Monkey Hunter. Oh, that's right, Monkey Hunter. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Um... So they're they're hanging out at the house, and there's like a news thing that says that aliens have been abducting people, <clears throat> and they're like, oh, whatever, you know. Um, and then it turns out that uh, Shinpachi was abducted, and his finger is a screwdriver. Um, and he he realizes that they they must have transformed his finger into a screwdriver because they wanted to fix their PSP because it was broken. <laughs> Um, they wanted to fix the PSP because they couldn't get it to work anymore. 
Uh, then um, Kagura wakes up when Gintoki goes to go to the bathroom, and she walks out, and she's just a giant screwdriver. <laughs> like her whole body is a screwdriver. It's just yep. got face, like a face and limbs and stuff. Yeah, just a um, giant, giant flathead screwdriver. Yeah, and then uh, Gintoki walks out, and it's revealed that his dick was changed into a screwdriver. Um, they're they're at a cafe, and they're like freaking out, and Gintoki's like getting all pissed off. He is um, unbelievably angry. <laughs> and he's like irate, yeah. Um, and then uh, they decide that they're gonna play the the game that the aliens were playing, and then they were gonna find them in the game. Um, and so they get the game, which is which is Mon Hun, which obviously is the shorthand for Monster Hunter, but in this it's uh, it's Monkey Hunter <laughs> instead of Monster Hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, and they all show up in the world, um, and they made these characters, and their characters don't, like... Shinpachi's just looked like him. And then Gintoki made uh, his character a girl. Um, because he wanted... He's like, oh, everyone who plays these games is, like, uh, you know, little little kids, like little little high school boys. They'll, they'll totally fall for it if I'm a girl. Uh, <laughs> there's a very out-of-date trans joke in this portion but let's just skip over that um oh yeah that's right and and then kagura shows up like covered in armor and weapons and she's like a giant buff dude Mm -hmm. and it turns out that she beat up another hunter and stole all his shit um two guards show up and they're like oh we're the admins of the game and we heard that you attack someone and so they kill them and eat them <laughs> and take all their stuff um they realize that they're not going to have any chance to, to like get anyone else's help so they're trying to go hunting to find other players to team up with to find the aliens um they they keep trying to chase off this monkey that's chasing them with like different monster hunter references like the poisoned meat it's poisoned bananas instead but uh kagura eats it and then they try to put another one in a pitfall trap but then kagura springs the trap because she <laughs> takes the banana um and then eventually they get rescued by a mysterious player that just uh, that appears at the end mm-hmm. and that's the end of uh this episode and yeah, let's get into it. I don't have very many notes for this other than, man, remember the PSP? Yeah, man, a long time ago. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is funny because I know, obviously, the PSP over here. Apparently, in, in in England, it did perfectly fine. But over here, when it came out, it was like so much crazier expensive than the, the DS that it didn't really make sense to really get it over the DS. So... We didn't really... There wasn't, like, a lot of people playing the PSP unless they were, like, trying to illegally play Final Fantasy VII, which seems to be the number one thing, reason that you've ever saw... Like, it's at least for me, when I was, like, in high school and stuff, if I saw a PSP, it's because the person had jailbroken it, and they had, like, uh, <laughs> PS1 games on it to play. <laughs> but in yeah, Japan... That and, and Crisis Core are, like, the yeah. reasons why you would own one, basically. Exactly. Yeah, basically. But in Japan, it was fucking huge because they had uh, Monster Hunter. And this is like a good way of seeing like how big the Monster Hunter had gotten that it was like a full on uh, three episode arc for Gintama. (laughs) That's how powerful it was. So it's kind of nice to see it like that. It's weird for me to think about because, again, Monster Hunter wasn't really a thing I thought about very much until. um... Damn, at least that 3DS game, I think. Yeah, it had been a bit. So it was kind of cool to see. I like the setup here. The these aliens are real dickheads. <laughs> There's no they really made some terrible aliens with these uh, Amanto aliens that just want to fix their PSP so they can continue playing Monster Hunter. Uh huh. <laughs> terrible, terrible people. Um, I liked how easily it's it's funny because Shimpanchi is like the most like. Uh, they make fun of it a lot because he's the most like basic character of all of them. Even in the character creator, it doesn't take him very long to just create himself. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just him. It's, it's literally just himself. Yeah, but he also gets like the most like innocuous screwdriver in, out of everyone because it's just the single finger. 
<laughs> that's it compared to everyone else who either got turned into one or Gintoki who was the only person who had his penis changed into <laughs> a screwdriver he kind of gets off easy um I like how aggressively angry Gintoki is about what they've done to him because once he realizes it it's like a full-on character change he's just like no we need to get them. We need to rip them off. I need to get it back. He's just like loudly screaming in the cafe, <laughs> like yeah, in the he's cafe, like losing his shit in the cafe. And yeah. then he's also mad that the type of screwdriver that it is is not one that he recognizes. No, and then they they say like in order, which is you know, sh- uh, <laughs> Chekhov's penis screwdriver. They set it up in the first episode that it's so wildly specific that it's actually actively useless. <laughs> Um, I like that bit. I did like... Now, this is something that's funny because just the way that we kind of know Gintama, that the characters that they have here in their Monkey Hunter for both Kagura and Gintoki are the ones from Jumpudi Heroes, the, the, the from the gender swap one. It's like the exact same characters, I want to say, <laughs> the female Gintoki and the male uh, Kagura. I forget that. Yeah, Ginkgo. Yeah, and... yeah, I think so. G- yeah, Ginkgo, and I don't remember what Kagura's was. It's yeah. like a crazy, like Yama, Yamaguchi or something. Yeah, it's something like that. Um, the only reason we don't know that one name is because she unfortunately did not get a limited unit. So <laughs> it's uh, I can only remember the names of limited units yeah, and the curses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I also like the first thing when he's like, because because uh, Shinpachi immediately falls for the f- like a woman asking from him for help, and then the drop f- into him saying, "Give me your balls," and then she immediately just starts <laughs> punching his crotch over and over and over again. <laughs> and uh, that was good. Again, unfortunate with the. Tra- I actually completely just skipped. Because I was like, "Oh, that's an unfortunate joke," you know. 2008 yeah uh, not a not a great joke not, no, a, not, a, no. not a joke that lives to the modern era no not at all but other than that i really ended up liking the setup for this episode and seeing just how crazy it gone and the this entire like situation being like a setup <laughs> I, maybe it really is just the start of his like how much mileage can you get off from a character having their penis turned into a screwdriver, but the way that he sells it as the worst thing that has ever happened in the history of mankind <laughs> is really good. Because there, again, there's a bloodlust to him that just has not existed throughout the entirety yeah, of the. He's like legitimately furious, un- like... unbelievably angry. It's uh, amazing, actually. So yeah, how how did you do? You have anything else to add here, Zen? Uh, no, it was really fucking good. Yeah, it's really funny, um, and also like the the Monster Hunter references as well. The the catching the like the <laughs> the getting caught in the trap and eating the bananas. Yeah, because too, when she when she eats the poison banana, um, she gets the paralyzed effect around her body that you get in Monster Hunter when you have paralysis and you can't move. Yeah, and they start saying like, "How did you even get here?" <laughs> You're paralyzed. Yeah, when she trips the pitfall trap, they're like, how did you even get in here? They're, you're, you're paralyzed. Not possible. Oh, so funny. <laughs> oh, it's really funny. It is. And let's get into the next one, which is episode 122. Uh, imagination is nurtured in the eighth grade. <laughs> uh, so, one... Hang on, I gotta switch over here. 122. Uh, so they're still trying to chase the aliens. They're still in the game. We're coming in the cliffhanger from the previous chapter where they are rescued by this mysterious person that was watching them as they were run out of town. Uh, and it's another player. And they're like, oh, this guy, this guy definitely knows, uh, you know, how to play the game. He's he's a veteran. We got to recruit him. And he, like, has a weird talking style, and he's like, oh, hello, everyone, LOL. And, like, he says lol after every <laughs> single thing that he says. Um, and then it's eventually quickly revealed that not only was he also turned into a screwdriver, uh, but it's Katsura. <laughs> yes, because they do the, the basic setup. <laughs> Who do you think you are? He's like, I'm a screwdriver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. He he ends up fighting with uh, so his name is like 
I think it's Fruit Punch Samurai yeah. Q or something. Yeah, it's or the M. it's the return of the Fruit Punch it's, Samurai because th- this yeah. is also the same cafe where they had the the kill yourself <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> yeah, it, it's Fruit Punch Samurai and then some letter. Um, yes, I, I want to say it's up, M. Yeah, but. and then he ends up arguing with someone else who was fuck. What is the other one? It's Fruit Something Samurai M. It's not Fruit Punch, but it's something else. It is like um, Chin Chinpo, maybe. Something like yeah, like Fruit Chippo Samurai M, and they're like they're arguing again about who gets to use the the Fruit Samurai handle and who does it. Yes, and fru- it's Kondo because it's the same guy it was last time. Yes, Fruit Chimpo Samurai G, and the I'm Fruit uh, Fruit Punch Samurai G. Pleased to meet you. And then, and G, then he, yeah, it was Fruit Punch Samurai G. And then he puts in parentheses Katsura. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, they're arguing, uh, and then they're like, it's Kondo, he's also a screwdriver. But then Kondo was not actually abducted by the aliens. He, like, became a screwdriver in the same experiment that created the fly. <laughs> That's right! He got put into a fly contraption, and I was like, oh my god, you guys also fell into this? It's like, no! <laughs> uh, and then they decide that they need to find uh, the legendary Hunter M., uh, so they go to the most dangerous place they can, um, and they see this girl tied to a tree, like being roasted over a fire. And like, oh my god, we have to, we have to save her quick. And it's just uh, Sachan. He's like, <laughs> why did you cut me down? Um, and then they start saying, yeah, like, you then, got the wrong M. You got the wrong kind of M because they found a, a yeah. mess. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I think Kentucky attacks her. <laughs> he's like oh my god it's you uh and then they're they're ambushed by like one of the legendary giant monkeys uh and then it's killed in one hit and they're like oh my god who who could possibly be strong enough to do that and then it was um it was m the legendary hunter and he jumps down and pulls his hood off and it's just cloud yeah that's right he's like, you look a lot like someone <laughs> Yeah, they're like, hey, wasn't he in Final <laughs> Fantasy? It's just Cloud. It's clearly just uh, Cloud. Except instead of a giant sword, he uses a giant arrow to fight. That's right. Um, and then he reveals that he's like, yes, I was also abducted by aliens. I'm not quite as bad off as you all are as screwdrivers. But you see, I was abducted by aliens and then suddenly became unemployed. <laughs> That's great because I, I <laughs> like you're just blaming the aliens because you don't do anything. Yeah, and I, I, I finally realized why because I was wondering why is this name called Legendary Hunter M? It's because the M stands for the Ma- Madio, <laughs> the the yeah, use- the, the Dao, yeah, the Dao. Fuck! I was like, oh, it's so good. Yeah, but the reveal here of Azagao like, was fucking hilarious. <laughs> and then uh, the the aliens end up showing up. Um, and they're fighting another legendary, like, monkey, and Hasegawa's giving him this speech, like, oh, you know, don't, whatever you do, don't die, we, we can do this, and then the aliens just kill it with, like, a gun. <laughs> like, the little gun that makes it explode. Uh, they, they make a plan, and they're like, okay, Gintoki and Sachan are gonna go pretend to be cute girls, and trick them into teaming up. Uh, it works at first, and so they're walking through the, the dungeon together, and Kondo shows up completely naked. And he's like, the only thing that we have in common with them is our antenna. And so he's like, doesn't, doesn't my antenna look familiar? And he's like, flashing his dick at them. <laughs> uh, Gintoki ends up killing him with his sword. And they're like, wow, so a rare new monkey. type of monkey they added into the game. <laughs> And Kagura cuts his dick off and gives it to the alien. <laughs> it's a rare drop. <laughs> As, yeah, and then it's funny. She goes, oh, my God, I got a really rare drop. And then the other alien goes, oh, wow, man, that's really nice. You can make some really good armor with that. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. And then... Uh, it, they reveal that uh, the oh, then Katsura aliens... does it again. Then Katsura does it too. <laughs> oh yeah, and Gintoki kills Katsura also. Um, and then the, they reveal that the two aliens 
were Hijikata and Okita the whole time, who are also screwdrivers. <laughs> and that's how the episode ends. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, first of all, it's really funny. There's a there's like the briefest of brief uh, Bleach reference, but it's when they're showing all the characters together as one before it's revealed that M is uh, Hasegawa. They do like a it's Kenpachi in the yeah, in it's the like silhouette. a shadow of of Kenpachi, yeah, <laughs> which is really funny. Uh, in general. This episode is really funny again. Continuing on, I was thinking when they were at the cafe, I was like, oh, you know, that's the same cafe where Fruit Punch Samurai and the Fruit Chimpo Samurai were having an argument with each other. That's funny. And then the second I started thinking about that, they fucking showed up, and I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> I love the return of these two characters specifically. Um,. Because, like I said, I think I've said before, Katsura and uh, Kondo have, like, the weirdest relation. Like, if they did not specifically have to be... Uh, they're both hostile and, at the same time, the best of friends <laughs> at the exact yeah, same like time. Yeah, if they, if they weren't on opposite sides, they would just be friends. They would be, 100%. Um, so, yeah. I like seeing them there together. I like the reveal of Hasegawa as he's, like... Very easy. He's telling him, like, oh, uh, yeah, they turned me into a useless old man. He's like, no, you were already that. <laughs> you didn't get yeah, it. Like, they were, like, not buying it at all. <laughs> no, not at all. And then they also reveal, like, of course, the M is the strongest player. So the only people who have time to get good at a video game are people who are uh, unemployed and or useless. And he's yeah, the they most. don't have anything else going on, <laughs> so they can't. All they do is play this game, and he's the most of anyone <laughs> who would do that. <laughs> so it only makes sense for him to be the absolute strongest in this game. Uh, <laughs> I like that bit. I like how immediately they take out the legendary monkey. Uh, it's like a one-shot. Like, they do this twice where they're just, like, one-shotting this, which I think is just a really good gag on, like, Monster Hunter itself. The idea of like, oh yeah, you make you fight these giant things, but most people are so crazy overpowered with their gear and stuff that they can easily like take down most big bosses in a single hit or something. <laughs> I thought that was really good. Uh, obviously, I like that bit. It's always really funny to me whenever Gintoki's VA puts on a fake girl voice. Yeah, and it's like awful. <laughs> yeah, he's like, ah, the nine. He's like, he did the same thing. I kept thinking back to to to, to, to Keila Joseph and him doing it because he does the exact same thing there, doesn't he? Because <laughs> they share the yeah, same VA. Yeah, really good stuff. Always funny. Um, I like the bit with uh, Sachan where they were just immediately <laughs> Kentucky wanted to immediately start beating up on her again <laughs> the second they saw that she was in the game. Um. The reveal that the aliens were actually Hijikata and Okita the entire time was really funny. Uh, especially because they do the same thing. as like, who do you think you are? And then they do the same thing. We're screwdrivers. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously that bit where Kondo comes out naked. Because I feel like, in, in general, Kondo does this a lot. I think he's the character who's gotten naked the most out of anyone. Oh, easily easily and every single time it makes me giggle in some kind of way because i think it's funny they find new ways to make kondo nude and it'd be funny to me but this bit here where he comes out and he's like trying to pretend like oh yes we're gonna bond together and his immediate reaction is to kill him and then also <laughs> remove his penis <laughs> yeah they fucking I got a rare, I got the, truly a rare drop. <laughs> and that they give them, also that it's censored and they show them holding it and everything was really funny. I think this is also the bit where Kagura starts like coming up with the backstory to her character. And it keeps getting progressively more and more like crazy every time she mentions it. And it's also really funny because originally the the original plan was obviously just Gintoki and Sachan, but then she joins up, and then they're like, "Did you forget that you're not a cute little girl at the moment?" Uh, yeah, well, well, because that's where the episode title comes from is her her backstory, because it's like super edgy and stupid, and they keep calling it like the eighth grade backstory. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's where it comes from. Really funny. And yeah, I also really like this episode. I thought it was another <laughs> another funny one back to back. Uh, what do you think about it, Zen? Uh, yeah, it was really funny. I love the reveal that M just looks like Cloud because <laughs> it's like the 
the the he, he like becomes so uh what's the word i'm looking for mainstream that it's like oh everyone would just do that you know just make themselves look like him because he's the hero everyone knows yes exactly um, I thought that was fucking funny, especially when Gintoki points it out and no one, like, responds. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, like, dwell on it, and he's just like, that guy from FF? And then they just leave it alone. Yeah. Um, I really like the reveal that it was Hijikata and Okita also as screwdrivers playing as the aliens. Hmm. Um, and then I really like when Sachan was just playing. Because, like, all the other characters are like, oh, we're playing to find the aliens because we're you know, we're screwdrivers and we need to get our bodies back. Sasha's just playing the game. <laughs> yeah, she is. I, <laughs> I think she mentions later in the next episode, like, actually, there's a reason for me doing it. But for the most part, she's just kind of screwed. She's not doing a very good job <laughs> looking for the aliens. <laughs> she's just, like, hanging out in the middle, getting roasted, just enjoy. It's really actually, now that you mentioned it, it is really funny to imagine her sitting at a computer just watching her character get roasted going, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, just of... being really into it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. It's time to end the Monkey Hunter arc in what is perhaps, perhaps, the greatest setup to a dick joke that has ever existed in anime. The only yeah, one with the, with the balls to dedicate <laughs> three episodes of an entire arc to make this one joke. Episode 123, always keep a screwdriver in your heart. So they, realizing that the aliens are not actually playing the game, they have no way of finding them. So they decide to meet up, because their original plan in the last episode was to get all of the, the to get the aliens to befriend them, and then meet up in a LAN party. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, which the, the, I don't know if this was a Crunchyroll issue or if it's actually what um, they, that uh, Hasegawa says uh, because he calls it a land party, L-A-N-D, <laughs> which is really funny because if it's intentional, it's because he's an old man, so he thinks that's what it is. Um, that is yeah, now that you mentioned it, that is funny. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if that was a subtitle issue or if that was actually what he said. But, uh, so they're all having the LAN party now, and they're meeting at this restaurant, and they're trying to discuss the plan, and it's been weeks, and they haven't been able to fix the, the screwdriver thing, um, the, Katsura is, like, handcuffed while he's there, (laughs) um, because he's, uh, because he's just Katsura being there with the police there. Oh yeah, he didn't know that they was about to get arrested. It's really funny because yeah. does this is like, well, it's not all lost. He's like, what do you mean? And then that's when Katsura shows up. He's like, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just there. Um, and then uh, Katsura ends up like giving them this speech, and he's like, you know, what we need is not. Uh, to play Monhun or to, you know, try to fix our problems over barbecue. What we need now is the willpower to live as screwdrivers. <laughs> because they're never going to do it. Um, they, uh, the Katsura ends up saying that he knows where they are. Um, and then Kondo has this, like, picture fall out. Um... Of his uh, something, he's got something. And his picture falls out, and it's truck a, driver, a drug. screw woman. But it's just a, it looks exactly like them, but she's a screw instead of a screwdriver. And he's like, "Oh yeah, it's a princess that I might be having an arranged marriage with." Yes, yes. yes. Uh, and then everyone leaves, and they're all sad. And then they all end up getting jobs that are like different. Like <laughs> they, they be- Gintoki, Shibachi, and Kagura become truckers. This bit, this bit here, is really funny because it's, it's really so, funny. It's so solemn. I it's, don't remember what the other characters do. Uh, but, it's, uh, it's, uh, I think I remember some. Kondo's doing the marriage interview. Okita's a, a golf caddy, I think. Yeah, because he's. I need the the driver because that's the thing. Is that screwdriver? He's like, oh, you need yeah, me. So he like leans forward and like, no, the I'm other one. <laughs> Hijikata is working, I think, on fixing things. 
Um, and yeah, the, continue on. There's so many puns here. There's so many driver based puns in this short amount of time. In this super like slow, solemn looking at to like we're now just gonna accept our lives as screwdrivers. Because <laughs> again, truck driver. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> they're drivers. <laughs> Uh, and then eventually, um, Sashan gets a lead, and she's trying to tell them the location, and she's, like, jumps, she, like, jumps onto their truck. Or, no, no, Kentucky hits her, and he runs her over with the truck. <laughs> yep. And, uh, she climbs through the door, and she's like, oh my god, even as a screwdriver, you're still in the status. And she's, like, blushing. <laughs> um, and then... She's trying to, like, pep talk them into going to fight the aliens and, and repair themselves. And she's, like, hanging from the door. And Kentucky opens the door to try to throw her off. And she's, like, clinging to the door before she eventually falls. And then as soon as she falls and she's, like, laying in the street looking like she's dead, Kentucky's like, all right, pull up the map if we're going to go get these aliens. <laughs> um... They all show up, like, everyone shows up at the same time, and Gintoki rams the alien spaceship with his truck, and then they all bust in, and it's really funny, because when they bust in and tackle two of the aliens, um, Kagura busts through the wall by spinning, like, a screwdriver, like, with her <laughs> screwdriver head, and then Shinpachi tackles one of them and holds his screwdriver finger to his throat <laughs> like a knife. And then the greatest Gintoki introduction is done because he has his it's, big hero. It's the intro. best one in the whole series because he steps up into like the hole that Kagura made, and it's like bright light shining behind him, and he's looking down at him all serious, like a, like an anime entrance, and he's in his regular outfit again because he had been wearing like trucker clothes. Yeah, while he was the truck driver, and he steps up and he's looking at, and he just goes, "Give me back my dick." <laughs> Land this ship. Give me back my dick. <laughs> and I immediately put up that screenshot and I said, my MC. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Fucking legend. A legendary hero <laughs> introduction. Gintoki's the, the best way, the, at it. The PG way that the wiki says it is, Gintoki demands the Amanto stop flying the ship and revert their modifications. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love him for trying. <laughs> Gotta love him for trying. Uh, and then they they say that they they'll never stop the ship because um, the the brain of the ship is still active and this the screwdriver they need to disassemble it they don't have. Uh, and then Kentucky uses his screwdriver dick, which they set up as being an unusual type of screwdriver. Uh, to to disassemble the mother brain of the ship. This fucking dick animation. <laughs> and, and he's, like, spinning with it to, like, unscrew it. <laughs> and he's, like, screaming as it fades out to white. And it gives him, like, the, the you know, the black lines over the white background anime yeah. look. And his final saying is, uh, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and oh, that uh, that's the end of it, right? The end of mm -hmm. the, you don't see him. Yeah. You assume after this that he gets the penis back and everyone's returns. Well, there's a there's a little bit at the end because the episode like ends properly and then they're all kind of back to normal, like talking to each other at the end. Oh, that's right. This is the Hasegawa bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's like they they're all just kind of hanging out again, and Hasegawa is uh. I think he's, like, trying to get money out from under a vending machine or something, and they're like, I feel sorry for him. Uh, and he, he gets mad and throws the coin, but then it also shows him back in the game as as M, and he's, like, fighting another monkey. And he says, like, wait for me, my friends, which is the same line he says to the other ones. Yeah, he's like, wait for me, my friends, I'm coming. <laughs> and I think it's meant to be the exact same thing as him fighting the narwhal, right? I think so. It's, it's yeah. like, literally in the same style and everything. Yeah, and it does the same thing where he like jumps with his weapon, and it like it does the freeze frame where like yeah. the saturation <laughs> changes. Yep, yep, <laughs> and that's the official the end of it. Okay, 
Let's get into this. Um, how many ways can I say peak fiction? This is perhaps <laughs> the greatest dick joke ever put to mankind <laughs> in anime form. I, I was watching this and I was like, this is going to be so fucking stupid. Like, why, this is going to, I'm going to hate Gintama this week and it's going to be a bad episode because this is so dumb and it's all we're watching. By the end of it, I was con- I'm convinced this is some of the best shit it's ever been. <laughs> it's so g- so. There's a lot to be said about the delivery of a joke, and this has perhaps one of the greatest setups. And the ending bit here, where it's all super. I think what really helps it is that bit where they're solemnly like like moving on with their lives and this bit here is so funny because the care the situation that you see on screen it never like stops to do like the hoo-hoo, like funny joke thing it's super serious but then it's also giving you just like a ton of puns like it's like oh man things are really bad between okita and you can tell that there's there, there should they can tell that they're downtrodden because okita is actually being nice to hijikata and he's offering a, him a drink, which is of course a screwdriver. The the fun, the fucking drink is also. He's offering him all this stuff and all these jokes about like, oh yeah, I need a driver, and he goes like, oh yeah, of course me. He's like, no, no, like putting, and he goes, oh of course, and he just gives it to him like, oh like, oh yeah, sorry, sir. And he just gives him like the driver. It's so unbelievably funny just because of the way that they're taking it so seriously and you can really tell that their lives have been completely like just like uh halted because of this new uh screwdriver situation but also the sachan's uh like plea to them as he's talking to gintoki where it's like could you really live a life like that a life where you're not just trying to (laughs) fight against fate itself (laughs) And then when he uh, froze her off and does all that, he's like, okay, give, pull up the map. We're going <laughs> we're going back for my dick. <laughs> it's so good, and it's so funny. Also, this bit here at the end where he like says, go to hell. And trust me, if I didn't think YouTube would shut down the video, the thumbnail would 100% be him f- putting the screwdriver dick inside of the mother brake panel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but the fact that it also spins him around is really Yeah, fun. he like twirls around. Yeah, he twirls around <laughs> it and he goes, oh! <laughs> It's really good. Uh, I forgot to mention it just because it didn't, sh- uh, it sh- they showed him just briefly. Elizabeth was also turned into a screwdriver and I really like how Elizabeth looks as a screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, just with like the round Elizabeth face. Yeah, just put it in there. I thought that was really funny. Um... Yeah, this entire bit was just so good and so funny. Also, the the fact that like um, the way that they caught uh, Katsura, because I think they they end up like making fun of Hijikata and Okita for using the uh, avatars of the Amanto to try and look for the Amanto. Says so like that's a really dumb idea, and he goes like, yeah, it's, and then he goes, yeah, it's not so dumb. We got a big fish, at least. And they're like, what? And then that's when Katsura comes in and they capture him. Which is funny. But also, yeah, like... it was like a ploy to get Katsura the whole time. Yeah, 100%. Um, I also like the bit where Kondo, when he's, like, getting through the arranged marriage... It looks really... Again, a lot of the characters' fates, even though it's really stupid that they got turned into a screwdriver, and you're thinking, does that really affect your life that much? <laughs> But when Kondo's, like, doing the... He's going through the thing where he's like, Oh, yeah, you're... I'm a screwdriver. You're a screw lady. We could get together. And they're, like... He's, like, laughing. The thing that make, gives him pause is that he actually looks up a picture... He has a picture of Tay and he looks at it. And you can see right before Sachan was actually getting him that he was actually going to run away. Like, he didn't want to actually marry her and he didn't want to have that life. But he also knew that in his mind as a screwdriver which again i'm gonna call bullshit on his thinking because obviously if tay can love a man with a hairy ass she can love a man who's also a screwdriver but nonetheless let's continue on (laughs) that he was willing to to run away from it all just so he didn't have to go for the arranged marriage (laughs) but then he gets like his fourth arranged marriage it's constantly happening which is really at every single time the thing that stops him is that he looks at a picture of tay (laughs) and he goes no (laughs) no 
Yeah, he looks at a picture of Tay who does not return his feelings. Not so ever. What? None whatsoever. If there was any uh, chance of him, I would say, you know, maybe. But I understand wanting to go for it. But at the same time, at some point, he really has to just give up the ghost. <laughs> But anyway, that bit is really funny. The fact that Sachan is the one who's actually, like, um, still dedicated to the hunt, and they show her, like, going through the cases of everything and looking for them is also pretty funny. Because this is the only time we've ever seen her actually do her job when she's not being distracted by Kentucky. <laughs> and it actually shows her as being, oh yeah, no, she's super competent, and she can actually do what she wants if it wasn't for the fact that she has an unbelievably blinding love for Kentucky <laughs> that distracts her from... <laughs> yeah. That bit's really good. Everything about this was really good. I love this arc. It was such a... If the fact that this was also considered a Monster Hunter arc is really funny. Uh, I think they also say... I forget if it was in the last episode or this one. It's like, you made us waste an entire episode. Like, Kentucky's, like, so furious with the fact that they wasted an entire episode <laughs> to look for her. Yeah, he's, like, pissed about it. Like, really pissed. He's like, why is this stupid episode going for three long? <laughs> why is this stupid bit going for three episodes long? I only... Yeah, only... he's like, we wasted three weeks on this stupid <laughs> thing. <laughs> Which is really good. And yeah, in general, this this is just some great stuff. The setup here for the jokes, the final hurrah of getting everyone together to know there's still a chance. Fight back. You don't have to live your life as a screwdriver. You can fight back and you can get your penis back. <laughs> it's all great stuff. What do you think, Zen? Uh, really funny the whole way through. Pretty much the entire thing from start to finish was really fucking funny. Um, I have no complaints about it at all in any way. It was fucking hilarious. Yeah, and again, that ending bit with Hasegawa, also very funny. <laughs> Where they just show him yes. off one vital bit. <laughs> oh, great stuff. I'm so glad. this. I'm so glad that this is the 50th episode because we would have never experienced this if we were trying to watch Gintama by ourselves. We would never have made it to this episode. <laughs> Which is great because now we're actually getting to episodes where like, my friend was like saying, like, oh yeah, that's you're getting to some stuff where it's like some of my favorite stuff in there. <laughs> so I'm glad to have reached it. <laughs> 120, 123 episodes in, and there's still things that I'm surprised of Gintama showing me. It's a hell of a thing. <laughs> it really is. It's, dude, it's so good. It is. It's like, it's, it's annoying almost how good it is. It's just constantly good. It is. It is, 100%. And that's it for Shonen Archive this week. Let's take a look at, because things are about to get a little bit funky because of the way that certain episodes are getting broken down. So I think next week, if we're going to be doing it, it would be episodes 124, 125, 126, 127, and 128, because that's another three-episode um, three arc. And then it gets a little bit weird from then on in, because we have nothing but, like... Okay, no, I think we can still... So after the week after that one is actually another t like two mini-arc ones where it's the Kintaro arc, which is 129 and 130. And then that one has a thing called Ghost Ryokin arc, which is uh, episode 131, 132, 133, 134. I'm going to ask specifically the people who have seen Gintama, should Kintaro arc be its own thing because i'm a little bit afraid of what the four episodes will actually be in there for one episode 130 131 to 134 so you see what i'm saying here where it's like it's just enough episodes where if it's a long-term one it might end up badly affecting the two other ones so we might have to do one where it's just like those two uh, episodes oh yeah yeah you see what i'm saying our rule specifically because like four episodes is just enough to make me go like Mm, maybe we should have a little bit, like a maybe a, a a thing there that we see the other one separate. But I want to hear what the people who have seen Gintama kind of have to say about this one. And then from there, it only gets weirder because we have episodes one thirty five, one thirty six, one thirty seven, and then one thirty eight. And then we hit a big fucking arc that is one episode one thirty nine, episode one forty, one forty one, one forty two, one forty three, one forty four, one forty five, one forty six, and then the aftermath is in one forty seven. Okay. So, so 
Yeah, and then you from... Be prepared is what you're saying. Yeah, that's why I'm, like, trying to... I want to... This one is going to be the big one. This is one where it's, like, if we don't see all the episodes, it, we might actually need two weeks to be just 100% sure that we can see every single episode in the arc, because this is an insane amount of... This is more than Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, actually. The season finale for Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which was, I think, uh, the final, like, seven episodes, I think this actually beats it. By a wide margin, because this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine episodes in total. Jesus. Yeah. So I want to hear what the people have to say. I just wanted to give a heads up because I looked at the the schedule of things to come, and it's like, ooh, that is a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. And if the arc itself is actually good, we we won't want to stop in the middle of it. And right. That's, yeah. yeah. We we are we just want to both kind of just power through it and see it all. So that's what's coming up in Gintama. Feel free to leave a note down below, and we'll figure out what to do probably by next week. Uh, we'll have an answer for that. But uh, yeah, that's the end of Shonen Archive this week. Thank you very much again for 50 episodes for joining me and Zen on this. If you want to see some more of Zen, you can go to Zen's channel where he has Shonen and Chill. And I've heard rumblings that perhaps maybe something something else. Is it true, Zen? Or the... We, they, they, we don't know, man. We don't know. know. I'm just it's saying... It's a big old mystery. It's a mystery, big but I... It's a mystery right now. I, I'm just saying, in general, if you're a fan of Zen, I would suggest subscribing to Zen. That's it. That's good enough for me. Um, and if you want more of me stuff, you can always go to my channel. I'm going to start uploading a little bit more videos, because I think my arm is starting to get better i don't know what uh, the i think the answer was is that i i was not getting enough rest and my body was finally shutting down and my body was like you have too many problems either sit the fuck down or you're going to be in intense pain until you sit the fuck down and i finally found time to stop working and sit the fuck down and i'm feeling much better so i'm still gonna probably eventually when the, the second i can get a hold of my doctor <laughs> go to the doctor and figure out what was wrong with my arm to make Probably sure it's a good plan yeah even if if the solution is literally like hey just start training out your arms more so that you have more energy in them and stuff or something if the solution is that simple i will gladly do it but i need more than because i don't want that shit to happen it was bad i almost to the point where i was like if i had emergency room money i would have said send me to the fucking emergency room i'm going to rip off my arm if i'm allowed to continue feeling like this i don't want to feel like this anymore yeah uh, it sounds miserable it yeah it was very bad but thankfully it's looking better and yeah should join us next week for some more shonen archive or maybe uh, we'll figure it out. I actually don't know if we're going to be recording the next part of Jujutsu Kaisen, but whatever, there's show more Shonen Archive or more videos, feel free to watch it. <laughs> and until next time, everyone, we thank you very much for watching. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out. <laughs>